when um, one of our homes, the Lamar House that uh, Chris and I collaborated around, was a, a home specifically for young adults, and it had a kind of um, sub, I don't want to say substandard, but a, a uh, not a very nice backyard. And uh, we, we posted an ad um, looking for a volunteer landscaper who would like to come and just help us do some upgrading, make it look a little bit nicer, make it a little bit more functional for our residents. And uh, Chris responded and, uh, and basically turned what was going to be just a small project into a substantial uh, redesign of the backyard with the goal of uh, extending the living options for the residents and, and taking into account their individual and collective special needs and really extending the living space of the, of the home. So now uh, I'd like to turn it back over to Chris to talk more specifically about Lamar House and the project that she did with us. Thanks, Karen. Um, uh, so as Karen mentioned, the Lamar residence is one of the group homes that Pace manages. And it's home to six permanent uh, adult residents, uh, all male and all with severe autism. Uh, it's located in Sunnyvale, which is just northwest of San Jose, near the Pace School. Um, and it's a retrofit of, of an existing home. So you can see in the aerial, it was just a typical suburban, you know, one-story ranch-style home uh, in the midst of a residential development. Um, and as Karen mentioned, the, the backyard wasn't functioning very well. Um, they, you know, the paving was probably original to the home, maybe 60s or 70s, it was very uneven. Um, and that alone posed a real safety hazard for the residents that had um, gross motor skill uh, impairments. Um, there was also just a lot of clutter. There wasn't really a good storage space for things like trash cans. Uh, so those were becoming obstacles for the residents. And then the unpaid portion of the garden um, was a kind of a patchy, compacted lawn that became really muddy and unusable in the winter. Um, there were a few really popular uh, items, which you can see in the above photo, the trampoline and the basketball um, hoop. Uh, the residents were using these quite a lot, but uh, because there wasn't much else to do out there, there was very minimal seating, these activities would dominate the space. And the space really wasn't providing the kind of relaxing, restorative qualities that it really could. Um, and so, as Karen mentioned, I, I kind of came on board and was really excited about this. And I thought it had a lot of potential to serve as a, as a case study for what you can do even on a modest budget in an existing home to really improve the quality of life for the residents there. Um, and so I was super thrilled this morning to see that Marnie was introducing this uh, presentation because her book, um, along with Claire Cooper Marcus, The Healing Gardens, as a great resource for setting up a case study. I've never done one before. And so it helped kind of give a good overview of what are some of the important things, because this was an existing facility, to document pre-design so that you have something to compare your design with. Um, and that was really instructive. So these are kind of the four components that made up the, the case study. We had a questionnaire, um, garden use law, which I'll, I'll explain in a moment. Uh, using the Pace School was a tremendous resource to see how they can retrofit and learn and, and redesign things over time. Uh, and then also utilizing their occupational and speech therapists um, on staff. So the questionnaire, you know, I should, I should mention that because the residents were all severely autistic and nonverbal, we were really relying heavily on the people that knew them to speak for them. So we, the question here is given to staff, uh, the caretakers, and family members. Um, and there were a number of questions, but they, they kind of can be summarized by trying to understand what was limiting the use of the existing garden and what might encourage more frequent use and, and higher quality use. So some of the obvious safety-related things, there was no light. So um, in the winter in Sunnyvale, it, there was a lot of time that the residents were home in the free time when they couldn't really utilize that resource of the outdoors. So they were spending a lot of time watching TV. Um, and visiting family hardly spent time there. They, were, they never 